taking steps to develop a good starting soil should be every gardener's priority. And when it comes to feeding your plants, nothing beats organic homemade compost. Good compost contains the ideal range of nutrients which are released slowly into the ground as the plants need them. But there are times when feeding our plants can give them a real boost. When they are fruiting, if they are being affected by poor weather or pests, or crucially if they are in containers. How you feed them and what you feed them with is important, especially if you garden organically. Many of us will prefer not to use commercial non-organic fertilisers and opt for organic ones instead. But there is a way of making your own organic fertilisers for virtually no cost. We'll take you through the key steps. Plants require three main elements for good health. Nitrogen, labelled with an N, is for green leafy growth. Phosphorus, P, is for healthy root and shoot growth. And potassium, labelled with a K, is for flowering, fruiting and general hardiness. Commercial fertilisers, both organic and non-organic, provide these elements in precise amounts. Just look carefully at the label to find the NPK ratio. A balanced fertiliser will have an equal ratio, such as this one. Whereas a specialist product, such as this one for feeding tomatoes or strawberries, will have a higher potassium content. There are several different organic fertilisers which you can make for yourself. Comfrey is the wonder plant of the homemade fertiliser world. It grows prolifically in places that many other plants wouldn't and it contains high levels of all the essential nutrients for plant growth and a number of trace elements. There are different varieties of comfrey but the best one to plant is Bocking 14 which doesn't self seed so it won't invade your garden. A popular way to use comfrey is to make a liquid fertiliser. Harvest a large bag of leaves. It's advisable to wear gloves as the hairy leaves can cause a rash. Squash them into a large container, preferably with a lid to keep out the smell, and weigh them down. Leave for a few weeks and pour off the liquid into a clearly labelled container, keeping it out of the reach of children. When required, dilute 15 to 1 with rainwater. Using a watering can to water your plants, aim to water the soil, not the leaves or stems, as fertilisers can cause scorching of foliage. Stinging nettles are high in nitrogen and can also be used in the same way as comfrey to make a liquid feed. You'll definitely need gloves for this plant. After harvesting them, make sure you scrunch them up before weighing them down in a container. Dilute the liquid as before with rainwater so it looks like a weak tea solution. Grass clippings can be easily added to a compost pile, but in large quantities often make a slimy mess. They are high in nitrogen and potassium and can be used as a mulch on your vegetable plot. As with adding them to the compost pile, they are best used in thin layers. Use dry clippings in layers which barely cover the surface of the soil, applied after a light weeding. Wood ash contains useful amounts of potassium and other trace elements, depending on the wood burnt. Younger wood is better. It can be added in small quantities to the compost heap, where it can be blended with other materials. It's advisable to add it to the soil in autumn or winter, so the remaining compounds can break down without causing harm to your plants. Wood ash is alkaline, so avoid using it around plants which prefer acidic soil, such as raspberries, or where potatoes will be grown, as alkaline conditions can encourage potato scab. When you've made your own fertiliser, it's tempting to use all of that homegrown goodness and add it liberally to your plot. This should be avoided, as it will often do more harm than good. Too much nitrogen in particular can cause lots of soft leafy growth which is prone to aphid attack. Timing is also important. It's best to add small regular quantities when your plants need it, such as when they are flowering or fruiting, rather than single large applications. Our grow guides show detailed information on how to grow healthy plants. If you grow in containers, feeding is particularly important as plants can quickly exhaust the nutrients in the growing medium. It's a good idea to add generous quantities of nutrient-rich compost in the autumn, top up with mulches throughout the season which will slowly release nutrients, and to use liquid feeds for your fruiting crops. Making your own fertilisers is not only good value for money, and in most cases free, but it's also sustainable, using plants from your plot to feed your own veggies. What other organic ways do you use to feed your plants? Share your ideas with us by leaving a comment in the box below and click the subscribe button to receive more great gardening videos.